Here in New York, it is a fairly gloomy day outside, which means can't really barbecue and you know we don't want to cook inside and smoke out the house. That makes it a perfect day for a raw carnivore day of eating. Today, I welcome all of you raw tards uh, to the sacred ritual of not cooking your food. Uh, for those of you guys that haven't seen my raw versus cooked and various other days of eating, I do explain the main benefits of raw versus cooked foods. And we can go over that today as well while we're eating, you know, discuss why we're eating raw. Uh, so it's gonna be a really simple meal today. I'm just gonna have some skirt steak, some raw honey, uh, some various supplements to fill in the downfalls of the carnivore diet. Uh, so let's get started with that because it is way too late today. It's almost five o'clock and I haven't eaten anything yet. I've been doing a little too much work. I've been too busy and I need to get my calories in for this bodybuilding nonsense. Uh, so let's get started. Let's get the meal prepped and ready to go. Here I have some skirt steak from Frankie's Free Range Meat. And since my parents run everything through the dishwasher, there are some chemicals and negative cleaners that I want to wipe off these plates and these surfaces before I put the meat on them. I'll just take a, a towel with some reverse osmosis filtered water and I'll just wipe everything off that I'm going to be eating off of. One thing that makes it a lot easier, for me at least, is cutting the meat ahead of time so I don't actually have to cut it while I'm eating. And that also allows me to warm it up a bit easier. Uh, so since I did take this skirt steak right out of the fridge, it's cold and eating raw meat cold isn't enjoyable. So we're actually gonna pop this in a very low heat oven for like 10, 15 minutes just to get it to room temperature quicker. Now, of course you could, you know, leave the meat out a couple hours, take it out ahead of time. Over to the oven, I'll put this on 250 and we'll keep a close eye on this. You don't wanna go longer than five minutes, the meat will start to turn gray on top. While that's warming up in the oven, I'll just show you guys what supplements I'm taking right now. So I'm trying to do 400 to 600 milligrams of magnesium per day. Uh, I will get a magnesium supplement for you guys soon, hopefully. So I'll usually do three or four of these, maybe even five with my first meal. Magnesium is very important for activating vitamin D3 and you know, over the past several years of my diet, I haven't been getting enough magnesium. So uh, I'm at some type of nutrient imbalance stage where it's necessary to take a lot. Uh, copper to keep the zinc to copper ratio in check. Now this is the main downfall of the carnivore diet. It does not have enough copper. So uh, these are three milligram capsules. I usually take one or two with my first meal and then one with my second meal. And this is vitamin K2. Uh, I'll do anywhere from 10 to 15 milligrams per day right now. Uh, it's way more than you can actually get from food, but I've noticed it helps a lot. So uh, I'll take all of these in a couple drops after I'm about halfway done with my meal so that it incorporates into the food and it digests as if you know the supplements don't just hit my stomach. So as this is warming up in the oven, you can actually just go in here and feel how hot the meat is getting. And this is actually really hot, it's about to cook. So um, I'm just mixing it up together real quick and I'm gonna take it out. Now what'll happen sometimes is the bottom of the plate and the bottom of the meat will be cold. Uh, so what you do is you just take this out, let it sit for a minute or two, and, uh, and then you're good. This is actually on the verge of cooking. Uh, this is about as hot as you can get without uh, cooking the meat. But now we have some nice room temperature steak that we can enjoy. A lot of the times you'll hear it thrown around that you don't need to salt your food and this is incredibly subjective depending on the person's metabolic state, individual sodium requirement. Someone might need a lot of salt, someone might need a little bit of salt. If you are looking to reduce your salt intake and you still want to enjoy your meat, uh, this is something I've done on occasion. I really don't do this often. Sometimes I will use mustard. Very rarely will I do coconut aminos, but you know, both of these are fairly low in sodium compared to, you know, sprinkling a bunch of salt on your food. So maybe you could take some coconut aminos and then a little bit of mustard and mix it in there and you'll have like a little dipping sauce for your meat. For some reason, my camera thinks the meat on my plate is my face and I, I like to think I'm a little prettier than that. Uh, but I decided to get a normal sized knife for you guys for once. I mean, you guys seem to complain when I use the big knife. And just raw meat itself, the palatability of it 
really tells us what we're meant to consume as humans. You know, what else can you take out of nature in its natural raw state that is tasty, calorically dense, has a pleasant texture, and of course, high in vitamins and minerals. And it never gets old. Raw, unseasoned meat, day in and day out, something I can always eat. This is also a way to kind of reset food palatability. And I'm not sure if my food palatability video is still available, uh, but uh, we can definitely remake that one soon. The more you season food, the more you cook food, you increase its palatability, therefore you can consume more of an unnatural amount of that food. Is that necessarily a bad thing? No. But when you add in other negative lifestyle factors, overconsumption of food can cause problems. The main reasons to consume raw meat are from the digestive enzyme perspective. The enzymes in your body, in your stomach, is able to more easily digest and absorb raw meat. When you heat the meat, it requires more enzymes. The cell structure is more degraded. That being said, cooked meat does offer more energy to the body. And I don't really want to disclose why cooked meat offers more energy to the body, but it has to do with the gut microbiome. That's why every single indigenous group consumed both raw and cooked meat. Each of them served different purposes. They also all consumed fermented meat, which served a bacterial benefit purpose and a specific nutrient purpose. So raw is not better than cooked. Fermented is not better than raw. You want to include all three in your diet and the body will naturally have cravings towards different states of food, towards different foods, towards salt. Listen to your body and try to understand why you're doing certain things. When you pigeonhole yourself into a certain way of eating and go against what your body's telling you, that's where you run into problems. So let's try some of this uh, mustard soy concoction. Oh, it's a lot of flavor. You know, it's sweet from the coconut aminos, acidity from the mustard. I mean, yeah, it's similar to sushi, you know, because you know, you're dipping fish in soy sauce. Except I like this way better than sushi. Uh, just like you see with vegans, a lot of these raw primal dieters are always cold. Has to do with only eating raw food. One other thing that you guys have heard me mention time and time again is when you eat a raw meal, it doesn't really sap your energy. So it is nicer to have the raw meal early in the day and then have some cooked food later in the day before you go to bed. I was doing ground beef for a couple weeks and I was barely eating half a pound of meat a day. I was just so grossed out from ground beef and I switched back over to steak. I'm eating like two pounds of meat a day. All right, I'm kind of full, so I'm gonna go take my vitamins real quick and we'll grab some honey or some carbs. So this is a very special type of honey and because there are some losers out there that plagiarize people and ruin things for everyone else, I can't tell you guys what it is. Maybe sometime in the near future, I'll be able to tell you guys, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna sit here and have a couple tablespoons. Not really that sweet which is what's so unique about it. Normally you eat honey and you pucker up, but I've usually had a very poor sense of taste in general from since I was a kid. But one thing I like about honey is that I can kind of taste where it's from a little bit, like the flowers and stuff. I don't really feel like eating that much of this, but I want to have at least a couple tablespoons to uh, to get some energy and carb up. This is gonna blow your mind, guys. If I can get this for you guys. Let's get on with the rest of my day, work out. We'll have a second meal later. I really don't think I wanna have another raw meal later, but if it's raining like this, I guess we'll have to. It's about 1 a.m. right now. I am beyond exhausted and I still have a few hours of work to do. So after I had that meal, I made some products for Frankie's Naturals, I worked out. Then I had to drive through Manhattan to take a look at some gym equipment, which wasn't that great. And now here we are at one in the morning. So as much as I wanted to keep this like genuinely raw, uh, I'm gonna show you guys a recipe tonight, a uh, beef tataki, which is a traditional Japanese preparation of beef where they get a little bit of a crust on the outside of the meat, inside completely raw, and they serve it in this like tamari, soy, ponzu, really nice flavorful sauce we're gonna do a carnivore version. Partly because 
I really don't feel like eating completely raw meat again, partly because this skirt steak was sitting out for 10 hours, and I need to get calories in. I need this to be palatable and very tasty. Uh, in addition to the skirt steak, uh, the only thing we have to supplement is some copper, and I'm probably going to have a few more tablespoons of that special honey. Uh, I did have a few more tablespoons before I worked out, so you guys didn't see that. I'm trying to get between 150 and 200 grams of carbs worth of honey every day right now. Some organic black pepper and a sprinkle of salt. Since we just want a quick hot sear on the outside, you want this flame to be really hot. If the meat was cold from the refrigerator, you'd have less margin of error, but since it's been sitting out all day, and we need the grill to be hot. And a lot of the time, they don't even really get a sear when they do beef tataki, they just get it slightly gray on the outside. Point is, you know, 95% of the meat is raw. And you still get that really nice charred flavor. Anyone familiar with beef tataki knows it comes in this soup of soy sauce, essentially. So I'm gonna use the coconut aminos that I showed you guys earlier, and I've already filled up most of this plate. I'm just gonna season this with some salt and pepper. I might do a recipe on this in the future, maybe add some fish sauce, a couple other ingredients to it, some spices. And then when we take a look at the beef, as you guys see, completely raw. Uh, and this is what beef tataki is. There's a sear on the outside, but it's literally raw in the middle. And then it's plated in the soy sauce. I'll just, so what I'm doing is I'm dunking it in and then I'm just flipping it over so it's evenly seasoned. They'll usually plate it in some type of decorative pattern like this and then they'll have you know, a bunch of garnishes in the middle, maybe some spring onions, maybe something to reset your palate. But we are just gonna pile up the steak. There is our not so raw tarted dinner. I'm just gonna do a little more black pepper on top. So I decided to go up and take a shower while this beef was just sitting here and marinating in the coconut aminos. And now we're gonna sit down and try some. I'm glad I let it sit. And traditional beef tataki just has a lot more flavor. You know, coconut aminos don't really compete with all those sauces, tamari, ponzu, the acidity, the umami. But this is still good. I'm sure I'll come up with a, a beef tataki recipe for you guys. Now, is there a difference in the level of inflammation in your body from a meal like this versus just raw unseasoned beef? I would argue it's very insignificant. What's more significant is if this causes you to overeat by like a pound, a pound and a half, that amount of extra food will do far more damage to your stomach, to your gut than any seasoning or spice or whatever, any degree of cooking. I'm not super hungry tonight. Just try to get in like half a pound of steak. The main thing I wanna do is make sure this is enough for two meals tomorrow because this is definitely too much food for one meal tomorrow but I don't wanna to eat too much right now, so I don't, yeah, I think this is fine. So I'll leave this for now, even though I could eat a few more bites. You know, I honestly, I don't like stuffing myself, although because of this bodybuilding stuff recently, I've been kind of eating more than I know I should, and I've had corresponding, like, you know, sleepless nights, some insomnia, some problems. So, I try to get healthier, but you know, as the pressure of this bodybuilding stuff is still on the table, you know, I'm, I'm going to stick through it for as long as I can, or at least as long as I need to. So thank you guys for joining me today. I'm looking forward to, you know, in the upcoming few weeks, few months, to incorporate more exercise, fitness, lifestyle stuff into these day of eating vlogs, or I might just do, you know, day in the life where you guys can see my whole day. Although, you know, some days are boring and some days it's, it's difficult to film anything. I'm going to try to get more variety in here and there for you guys outside of just these day of eating videos as my diet is very strict and generic right now because I'm trying to avoid anything that is super high in zinc, nutrients that cause iron overload issues. My camera battery died, so a quick change of scenery and man does my skin look slick. Uh, I did want to apologize that my days of eating have been fairly generic, you know, lean meat and honey, you know, because I've been bodybuilding, because I've been following a diet specific to fixing iron overload. I'll try to add some variety in here and there, talk about more nutrient-dense foods, fats, things you guys can incorporate into your carnivore diet. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how things go over the next uh, few months, that's for sure. Uh, but let me know what other videos you guys would like to see in the comments down below, and uh, 
we'll see. Maybe Frankie Boy likes your ideas. Uh, so thanks again for joining me today, guys. And uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, we'll do a carnivore diet Q&A later, uh, live on Frank Tufano at 8 p.m. Eastern Time.